Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. It was a prayer of confession. It was a prayer of longing for deliverance. It was a prayer for grace. It was a prayer for hope. Today, we wrap up looking at five of the most significant prayers in the Old Testament. Next week, we'll look at five more prayers in the New Testament. And I've mentioned that some of the other prayers we've looked at this week were deeply heartfelt, and that's true of today's prayer as well. Today's prayer comes from the book of Daniel, and frankly, that's probably not a place in the Bible most of us are very familiar with. The book of Daniel serves for the Old Testament in much the same way the book of Revelation does in the New Testament. But in truth, it was written to reflect a very difficult time in Israel. And that's actually the point. It was a difficult time, but it wasn't in Israel. Babylon had conquered the nation of Israel, laying siege to Jerusalem and taking the city and destroying the temple. It's bad enough to be conquered by another nation but they would have understood the destruction of the temple as the conquering of their God also. And then Babylon took most of the people, at least all the upper echelon of society, off into exile away from their homeland. Psalm 137 reflects this time, and you can hear their anguish and their longing for their homeland. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept. When we remembered Zion, it begins. So when we come to Daniel 9, they are in Babylon and longing for God, longing for home, longing to be restored, and wondering why all this happened to them. But Daniel had never believed that the conquering of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple meant that God had been defeated. Instead, he looked for another cause for what had happened, and it didn't take him long to find it. The prayer he offers in chapter 9 is full of confession. Lord, we have sinned, he says over and over. We turned away from you and went our, after our own way and after other gods. We have received from you what we so richly deserve. Confession is a part of prayer that too often many of us overlook. We don't like to face up to our frailties and failings. We don't want to admit them to ourselves, much less to God. But if our relationship to God is going to be honest, if our relationship to ourselves is going to be honest, we need to admit the truth. We need to recognize and know who we really are and present our whole selves to God. We need to confess and to repent and to change our ways. And then finally, we need to fall on the mercy and grace of God. That's what Daniel's prayer seeks. A lot of his prayer recalls how God has been faithful to God's people throughout history, telling over and over that many things God, the many things that God has done for them. And then it confesses the ways they have not been faithful to God and how what has happened to them was just and deserved. And then finally, Daniel prays that God's anger and wrath might turn aside. He prays, as we've heard several times this week, that God be true to who God is, that God act with mercy and grace to the people and hear their prayer. Daniel prays for God to give forgiveness and not to delay in giving it. Daniel urges God to live up to God's reputation as a God of love and grace and to give love and grace to God's chosen people. And throughout this prayer, Daniel urges the people to be thankful that in spite of all that has happened, God has not utterly abandoned them. No matter what, they still belong to God and in God's time, God will restore. And that's true for us, too. No matter what we've done, we still belong to God, and God still invites us home. 
Now that's something to be thankful for. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.